Hey guys, it's Ross going on the Space Couch today. Time for part three of my Harry Turtle Dove book collection. Now we're going to get into the ten book series that he does about um, when the South wins the Civil War and everything that happens after. Um, so uh, we saw Guns of the South in a video a while back. Um, it, it's not a sequel to that because it's not Africanus from the future bringing back AK-47s. But the basic premise is that the South wins the Civil War. So skip forward about 20 years and there's this. How Few Remain, a novel of the Second War between the states. Now there's probably a map, I'll just read this out first, then we'll have a look at the map. How Few Remain is an epic of the Second Civil War, a time of glory and success, of disaster and despair. A generation after the South won the Civil War, America writhed once more in the bloody throes of battle. Furious over the annexation of key Mexican territory, the United States declared total war against the Confederate States of America. And so, in 1881, the fragile peace was shattered. But this was a new kind of war, fought on a lawless frontier where the blue and grey battled not only each other, but the Apache, the outlaw and even the redcoat. Along with France, England entered the fray on the side of the South, launching blockades and invasions from Canada. Out of this tragic struggle emerged figures great and small. The disgraced Abraham Lincoln crisscrossed the nation championing socialist ideals. Confederate cavalry soldier Jeb Stuart sought to prevent wholesale slaughter in the southwest de desert, while cocky young Theodore Roosevelt and obdurate George Custer bickered over modern weapons even as they attempted to drive the British back into western Canada. Thanks to the efforts of journalists like Sam Clemens, the, witness, the nation witnessed the, de the clash of human dreams and passions. Confederate General Stonewall Jackson again soared to the heights of military genius, while the North struggled to find a leader who could prove his equal. For in the second war between the states, this time, the times, the stakes and the battle lines had changed, and so would history. So, there's there a map. Yes. So, here you see the CSA, the USA, British Canada, here's Mexico, and in this, um, Sonora and Chihuahua um, get ceded to the CSA, so they now stretch across the entire continent from the Pacific to the Atlantic, and Cuba also. So, that is that one. Um, the Americans lose the war <laughs> to the South, and it's a cause of great distress to them. And that just means, you know, that it will build up again, and it builds up again... Uh, in the alternate version of the First World War and the series is called The Great War, the first one of which is called American Front and there you see the capsule in the background and here you see is that a US? No, a Confederate flag which I'm not happy about showing on camera but uh, and there you see the background and I assume that this and the other one are probably based on actual um, historical paintings um, with a different because obviously there was never biplanes to be over the capital. It will be based on something similar in our own history. So just a look at the map. You see now the Mexican states and the Baja California is still part of Mexico. But that's now part of the CSA. Here you see that they've lost some territory in Maine, the US, uh, as a result of how few remain. And the president at the time was President Blaine, who was never president in our uh, universe, but was like Secretary of State. So they deliberately took some of Maine as a personal humiliation to him. So. In How Few Remain, Harry Turtle Dove set the stage for a stunning alternate history of World War I. Now, with the Great War America in front, he carries this, this towering epic into the early 20th century in a bold reimagining of the fateful war that hurtled humanity into the modern age. Envision a divided America, one camp led by Theodore Roosevelt, the other by Woodrow Wilson, in a most explosive conflict humankind has seen, where global war is waged with sophisticated weaponry on American soil for the first time in history. When the Great War engulfed Europe in 1914, the United States and the Confederate States, bitter enemies for five decades, entered the fray on opposite sides. The United States aligned with the newly strong Germany, while the Confederacy joined forces with their allies, Britain and France. But it soon became clear to both sides that this fight would be different, that war itself would never be the same again. For this was to be a protracted global conflict waged with new and chillingly efficient innovations. The machine gun, the airplane, poison gas and trench warfare. In the Americas, the fighting spread like wildfire on multiple and far-flung fronts. The US Army invaded the South, striking Virginia, Kentucky and the West, and assaulted Manitoba, Ontario and Quebec. 
as President Theodore Roosevelt rallied the diverse ethnic groups of the northern states, Irish and Italians, Mormons and Jews, Confederate President Woodrow Wilson struggled to hold together a nation still beset by ignorance, prejudice and class division. And as the war raged on, southern blacks, oppressed for generations, found themselves fatefully drawn towards a climatic, climactic concentration. Yes. In that, they basically claimed the role of the communists that did in um, Tsarist Russia. So that is the first one of the great war sequence, American Front. Next, it's Walk in Hell. And this one, the world is convulsing. Germany remains locked in battle with France, Russia and Britain, while the United States and Confederate States charge headlong into the global conflict as bitter enemies once again. The year is 1915 and the time of darkness has come. Though the Confederacy has defeated its northern enemy twice, this time the US has allied with the Kaiser. In the south, the freed slaves, fueled by Marxist rhetoric and the bitterness of a racist nation, take up the weapons of the Red Rebellion. Despite these advantages, the US remains pinned between Canada and the CSA, so the bloody conflict continues and grows. Both presidents, Theodore Roosevelt of the Union and staunch Confederate Woodrow Wilson, are stubbornly determined to lead their nations to victory at any cost. While war on land and sea rages around the globe, nuclear tools, poison gas, submarines, attack airplanes and machine guns go into service. Heroism and fear run hand in hand as ordinary men and women, families, friends and lovers choose desperate measures just to survive. From the trenches that line the Canadian border to occupied Salt Lake City, the Great War Walk in Hell takes us to the American front, then into prisoner of war camps, strategy meetings and cities roiling with unrest. So yes, that is the second one in that sequence. And then the final one in this trilogy, Breakthroughs. And then you see a tank, kind of looks like a face. So we'll see what this one says. Is it the war to end all wars or war without end? What began as a conflict in Europe when Germany unleashed a lightning assault on its enemies soon spread to North America as a long simmering hatred between two independent nations explodes. Twice in 50 years, the Confederate States of America have humiliated their northern neighbour. Now revenge may at last be at hand. Under the leadership of Teddy Roosevelt and following a general named Custer, military genius or madman, the United States are fighting a war on two fronts in 1917. In the north, from the Pacific to Quebec, US forces in the air and on land are locked in battle against Britain and Canada. To the south, at the heart of a line that stretches from the Gulf of California to the Atlantic, Custer intends to do what none of his pre predecessors had ever managed, to smash through the Confederate barbed wire entrenchments in Tennessee. Into this vast seething cauldron plunges a new generation of weaponry, submarines, barrels, attack planes, poison gas and flamethrowers, changing the shape of war and the balance of power. While the Confederate States are distracted by the insurgency of African Americans as the dream of establishing their own socialist republic, the United States are free to bring their military industrial might directly to bear and to unleash the most horrific armoured assault the world has ever seen. Here are leather-jacketed daredevil pilots flying unproven fighters into anti-aircraft fire. Here is a melee on the sea as US soldiers de um, duel Confederate submarines. While the English, French and Japanese navies vie for control of the shipping lanes, uh, while they vie for control of the shipping lanes. So yes, what is this that's in here? Ah. United Airlines um, meal card. <laughs> We'll look at that another time, a little surprise there. So yes, that's the final one in the Great War series that ends with the defeat of the Confederate States, but just setting the stage for the next trilogy, which is called American Empire in the 1920s and 30s. And we'll start looking at that in the next video. Please subscribe to my channel if you enjoyed this content. Leave me a comment or suggestion for upcoming topics you'd like to see discussed or like the video.